Hi, this is Rob from Higher Power Performance. Um, got a more, few more test things here. Uh, get some hard data on the installs. Uh, this is all going to be for the Suburban, and we also picked up a 97 S10 Blazer to have OBD2 full time. Um, what you see on the far right is an MSD timing computer. Um, it allows me to adjust my timing from inside the cab. Um, the middle box is the Innovate, the wideband. Um, and data logging and on the far left is an EGT controller. Now I want to start off with the O2's. This is a um, standard heated O2. Um, and if you can see that, you see the louvers in it. The uh, exhaust passes through these louvers and uh, that's where it gets its sensor from. This is out of my 96 you can see it's already running pretty good. It's nice and clean, no black suit. But the purpose of showing you this is on a previous video you see where my Suburban had an issue with EGTs going too low at idle. And there is a way around this. On the newer style O2 sensors, if you order yourself a Bosch 15730, this is a universal style. Now this is going to look like a wideband to most of you, but it is truly not. But they have changed the design to make these things stay hotter longer at idle because the manufacturer has seen that it's a problem. You see the four wires, it's just a standard heated O2. But if you look in the end, you see the holes are in the end like a wideband. But it's shielded, there's no louvers, so it stays hotter longer. Um, this is working out really well in my Suburban. Now, to show you all what a real wideband looks like. Here's a true wideband. This is for the Innovate. Same thing, holes in the end, shielded. But, a wideband, instead of four wires, has five. It has a reference signal. And it's got a, a white, a black, a red, a gray, and a yellow. The other just has two whites, which are your O2 heaters, your positives. A gray, which is your ground. And a black, which is your actual signal. And MSD controller. This, this particular model is designed for MSD, which I have an MSD 6AL on the Suburban. Multiple spark ignition. Here's the actual computer. And what it allows me to do is roll my timing. You know, if I put, install this now, I can in, retard the timing 7 degrees and a half degrees or advance it 7 and a half degrees. I have 15 degrees of timing that I can issue there. So that would be a valuable tool. And here's the controller for the, for the Innovate. It's a real-time display. It has a USB port in it, actually a serial to USB adapter. I can record up to two hours, and I can also input it into my laptop to watch. Um, and here's some really exciting stuff. Here's the uh, thermocouple for the exhaust gas temperature. And here's the unit. You see how small it is. It's a digital display. Um, you can adjust max setting. So say if you set it at 1200 degrees, it'll change from green to red and tell you that it's getting hot. Um, the other thing that's really nice about it, you see all those inputs and outputs? I can incorporate this to shut down my cell, which I don't have issues with my EGTs. In fact, mine go low. but I'm working on a diagram for you guys. For any of you using EFIs or map enhancers, this, you'll run all your signal modifications through relays. So if something happens, this controller, as soon as this turns red and it goes hot, it will swap your relays over and make you go to a stock signal and keep the engine from going into to meltdown 
and keep you from having burnt plugs or pistons or you know, popped head gaskets, whatever else we have going on from high EGTs. So this is a very universal solution. It'll work for anybody's stuff, not just a dry cell, but anybody using signal modifications. So right now I'm working on and getting all the, you know, a universal wiring harness for this. Uh, and it, this setup will be about, with the wiring harness, probably about 135 bucks. Um, the only downfall to this is it is a digital readout, so it'll bounce around quite a bit, you know, 20 or 30 degrees on your last two digits. So you'll kind of have to RMS in your head, where personally I'm going to have a buffer through the laptop, so um, it'll kind of average it out for me. So that's uh, kind of what's going on. And we're down here in Burbank, and we've got an install shop and a research place. I'm unloading the trailer right now. And uh, another thing that'll be going on the Suburban very soon after I get the cell on my Blazer is a 383 stroker purpose built for HHO and that TPI unit you see right there. Uh, get rid of that throttle body. So, and also for, uh, I think it was Amera CIA, if I want to say that right, but it's America and he's got CIA capitalized. Um, I'm working on a video for you. Uh, there was a lot of questions with RPMs. And if you, if I had vacuum on that thing, my engine RPMs would have went up, not down when I disconnected because it is letting unmetered air in and your manifold absolute pressure will go down which will cause it to think that you have cracked the throttle open and it will inject more fuel and the RPMs will go up. Uh, any of you can try this method, unhook a brake booster or some big vacuum source and uh, even a small vacuum source will make your RPMs creep up. So that is being injected before the throttle body. Um, but the way you see my plumbing set up with the TBI, there's a spacer there. So I have my two tubes running through that spacer and pointed right down at the throttle body underneath the uh, injectors. So a very detailed video will show how my system is hooked up. And I will have a digital tack and I will show you all these things. And thanks for subscriptions, comments. Thank you and God bless.